to the Yarn Stories podcast. This is episode number two, the one with all the sock patterns. So I thought I'd just introduce myself a bit more than I did in the first episode. So I am Sophie. I am nearly 30. 29 again, as last year didn't count. Um, I live in Maidenhead with Matt, my boyfriend, and our black cat, Fernando. Today is Monday the 31st of May. It has been about two weeks since I last recorded, um, which I think is quite a nice time frame for me. So I think I'm going to stick to filming every two weeks at the moment and see how I get on. Thank you everyone who watched the first episode and subscribed. Um, I really appreciate it. If you would like to subscribe, subscribe, then please press the button under the video and make sure that you select the bell, you'll then get a notification each time a new video is released. You can find me on Instagram on, as yarn.stories and you can also find me on Ravelry at yarnstoriessophie. Okay, I think that's all the admin bits. Um, so I'm gonna start with finished objects. And the first one will be the one I'm wearing, which is the Granny Stripe kimono cardigan by Anna D. Um, I stand up. So this was a work in progress last week. I'm actually going to take it off because it's quite warm today. Uh, this was a work in progress last week, so I won't talk to you too much about it because you you know most of the information already or you could go back to the first episode and watch there if you didn't if you haven't seen that one already this was using a paint box 100% cotton Aran weight yarn in pistachio green so all I had to do to finish between the last episode and this episode was seam the pieces together and add all of the tassels which are all a bit curly at the moment I need to try and f I think I need to iron these to make them a bit straighter and look a bit neater I don't know if anyone's got any suggestions or tips for uh, tassel management then please let me know um so yeah I'm happy with it it's quite heavy actually um and quite warm even though it is obviously granny stripes so but yeah hopefully my friend likes it we'll see in July so yeah I'm gonna sort the tassels out and then and get that wrapped and stashed sure oh Siri um so yeah I'm gonna get that wrapped up uh stashed away ready for July there we go okay so my second finished object, which is another crochet project, was the is the Pure Bliss handbag, um, which was a crochet society pattern. This was by Martha Marquez, um, and you can see the gold stripe and the silver silver embroidery thread here, which is lovely little detail. And um, I'm gonna just be using this as something that's got well at the moment it's actually got my ball bands in for today that I've been talking about um but yeah this will be a project bag or or have handy things in like my project band but uh, the ball bands um yeah I just think it's really sweet and I finished crocheting this in bed a couple of evenings whilst watching below deck um but yeah this was made using the yarn that came in the box, which was box number 22. And that was the Bella Coco Tea Time Cozy Super Chunky Yarn in uh, Chai and Earl Grey. There were the colours. They're obviously exclusive to the box, but you can quite often get past boxes. So, And it was a, it was a really nice box, so you can head over to their website and you could probably grab a past box. If you wanted to make it yourself so that's that is that and then the next finished object is 
the Muscle Borough Hat by Yoselda T. So this I finished. I started doing 30 minutes of knitting each day. And this was the project I chose to work on as I thought. Otherwise, I think it would have been something that I would have just kept picking up and putting down and doing a little bit here and there and then not going back to necessarily as I wanted to do other things. But having one project to work on for 30 minutes a day, it surprised me how quick it worked up just doing 30 minutes a day. Um, so I posted a picture every day of where I got to, which I mean, it's not the most interesting when, when you're just doing stocking it for a really, really, really long tube. So yeah, push that inside and then you either have more of a slouchy hat or you can fold over the rim, which is what I prefer. So yeah, let me see. better to see it. So yeah, more of a slouchy version or you can fold over the rim. Yeah, I, I love it. Um, uh, Matt tried it on as well. We've got the same size head, which is quite a large um, head. And he actually surprised, surprisingly liked it as well. He, he, I said, do you want to try it on? You try it on. He's like, no, 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 I don't want to try it on. And he tried it on. He was like, oh, actually, this is pretty cool. Um, and he, he doesn't really normally wear hats, but he thinks he might wear this. So I think I'll be casting on another one so we both have one for the winter because I know that previous hats I've made crochet hats haven't actually kept my they kept my head warm but not my ears warm um which so if you go out when it's cold and your ears get cold I get pretty miserable so I think this definitely is going to keep me warm especially well one because it's obviously double layered where you fold it in on itself but then also if you fold it up to have the rim as well they're kind of double, double insulated. So this is the Muscle Borough hat. I used, get my ball bound out, got that one, this one. Cascade Heritage, Superwash Merino and Nylon. And the colour is 5608, which is this lovely green colour foresty green colour. Um, I made the adult large because I have a large head. <laughs> uh, when Matt and I graduated and we were ordering our cap and gowns, we both had to order the largest size. We actually have the same size head. It goes, it goes back quite a long way. So yeah, we can both wear it. Um, but yeah, obviously it meant I was I had more stitches in the round and it was longer so um it'd be quite quite fun to make some kid ones I think they'll be much quicker I think all in all it probably took me about a month to knit or probably about 30 minutes a day I reckon I don't know I only really counted the last and what did I say it was just over a week two weeks to do half hmm, who knows I think that's the good thing with 30 minutes of knitting. You can keep track of how long a project actually takes. Um, so yeah, I'm definitely going to carry on with the 30 minutes of knitting. But yes, so finished object number three, which I'm really, really happy with. Um, yeah. So now I have a hoe half finished object. I'm not sure where hose come from, but I've heard it quite a few times now, so we'll go with it. This is the hashtag sock by Becky from Bex Creates. And it is, it's at, um, I am test knitting this for her. And it is a second sock in uh, the Shits Creek collection that she is bringing out. Um, so yeah, this is a knit and pearl textured sock. And the great thing for me is that I now can switch between my knits and pearls really well. And I've got so much practice in with my purling. I feel super confident with it. And it just makes things a bit easier. Like things like ribbon, I always kind of dreaded a little bit because it took me so much longer than obviously stocking it. But 
from doing this sock, I am now a much faster perler, which, so that's, that's great. And because it's a pattern repeat, the, once that's kind of memorised, it was really, really easy to follow. And the pattern repeat meant that it was a bit like if you're knitting with stripes, you kind of want to get to the next colour. Um, when you finish one, you want to start the next one. So, and that's exactly how it was with this pattern. So I just, I found, as Becky said, Becky said, it knit itself. It was really fun. I uh, really enjoyed making it. I loved how fast it made it, worked up. I mean, we all love a quick project. It's very satisfying. I used a Fish Lips Kiss Hill and I actually increased a few stitches because I have a high inset, instep. So um, I find that socks are always super tight um, around here. So that's why my, my heel looks <laughs> extra large because uh, it is. But yeah, it's... So this is the first one and the second one is on the needles. So I'm using Magic Loop for this sock, which I haven't done since I my first pair of socks. And the first pair, first pair of Magic Loop socks I did was with the Symphony needles. Um, and they, they were great for my first pair of socks, but now I've used some, the Chai Goo red lace um which becky actually recommended and oh my gosh they are so quick there's no there's no catching at the join the the needles are have a nice point on them so you get through your needle uh get through the stitch super easy and they are just i'm definitely converted to chai goo for a magic loop i'd already used the nine inch circular needle which I loved as well but Magic Loop I was kind of put off from the where you have to kind of feed the stitches and turn and feed them again I kind of got a bit frustrated with the symphony needles but these it's fine I can turn my work and slip the needles through the stitches really easy so that's another thing I think that's why these are so enjoyable is having these needles to work with but yes yeah, so I, I cast on this on Friday and um, I got a bit cocky and thought I'm, I know what I'm doing I've already done the first sock I know I know exactly what I'm doing so I cast on and I got kind of over halfway through the cuff nearly finished the cuff and realized I'd done it wrong and I hadn't actually looked at the pattern again um, so yeah I had to rip it back so I ripped that back and then I started again, cast on again, got three rows in and realised I was doing exactly the same thing. So <laughs> third time lucky, I read the pattern, I had a word with myself and yeah, I got the cuff done and I've just started, started the leg. Oh, the cat is meowing at me. I'm gonna have to let him in. He might keep meowing at me, I'm really sorry. But it's too early for his dinner, it's only half two. So yeah, I've part way through the, I uh, just started the leg. I did, what did I do? I made a note of what I did because I haven't done that previously and I forgot. So I kind of wing it every time I start socks, trying to memorize what I've done. But what I learned is I obviously don't remember what I'm doing, so I should write notes. So I cast on 60 stitches and I did 40 row leg, 40 rows for the leg. Actually, did I do 40 or 50? It says 40, but I think it's 50. Hmm. Maybe, maybe I need to pay a bit more attention to my notes. Oh dear. Oh well. I mean, we'll see how we go this time and I'll edit my notes, but yeah. No, I did. I did do four. I, oh, here is the cat. He's just going to sit there. Oh. Um. This is Fernando. Uh, so yeah, 40 rows in the leg. That is what I did. So yeah, I'm gonna keep a note in this little notebook 
of what I do for my patterns. With this, I started on Magic Loop. And I started with DPNs and then realised that that wasn't, I didn't enjoy that. So I changed to Magic Loop. But then when I come to doing the decreases, I couldn't remember what I actually used to do the Magic Loop. So again, that's where I should have written a note of what I'd, what exactly, what needles I used and how I did it. And But I mean, it's worked out fine. We'll roll with it. But yeah, so I'm definitely going to start keeping notes for all of my projects, especially for things like this, because I know I'm going to come back to it. And I'm definitely going to be making these again for sure, because I think it's such a great pattern. Um, so yeah, that is it in the way of FOs and HOs, HFOs, HOs, FOs. So yeah. Okay, works in progress. So I haven't actually got too much to show you. Obviously, I'm finishing it off the socks for Becky. So that is also a whip as well as a work in progress. What I do have is um, this jumper by Rico, which is um, made with their luxury, luxury alpaca superfine yarn, which is 63% alpaca and 37% polyamide. Uh, colour is party. And the reason I have I purchased this pattern was because it's very, very similar to a jumper I've got from Marks and Spencers that I got a couple of years ago and I love it. It's really snuggly. Um, but they, and I've gone back since and tried to get it in other colours and things, but they, they don't do it anymore. And it's, it's really similar to that. So that is what, oh, that is, that's why I purchased it. Um, and I've done my swatch and I've got gauge. I've got gauge by going up half a needle size. So it calls for a six millimeter. I have used a 6.5. I have discovered I'm a bit of a tight knitter. So yeah, 6.5 and I have got gauge and this is so soft. And it's exactly the kind of fabric that I'm looking for, for this jumper. So I've done the swatch um, and had was planning to cast on, um, but it might go on hold because um, I do have another pattern pattern in progress project pending project so i will put a probably that side actually um picture of a test knit that i have been accepted to it is the seaborn tea by her garden knitwear uh, so i have just ordered the yarn for that um the yarn the pattern has been designed in is Line by Sanders Garn, which I couldn't actually get. So I put it, put the yarn into Yarn Sub and instead I am using, I've ordered Drops Bell, which is exactly the same makeup pretty much and same gauge, it, which is a 53% cotton, 33% viscose, viscose and a 14% linen. Uh, so yeah super summery top and I have decided to go for white as the main body with a pale yellow stripe so that should be arriving hopefully tomorrow maybe Wednesday so I'm going to swatch and cast that on it doesn't need to be ready until the end of July so I've got plenty of time but there are a few um, things included in the pattern that I won't have actually done yet so I want to make sure I spend I've got enough time to to um, go through the pattern, which is really comprehensive. Loads of guidance, load of videos. Um, so I wanna make sure that I, I really give my full attention and do my test knitting job to the best of my ability. The pattern itself comes in 
27 body sizes and 17 sleeve sizes so you can mix and match um to get the perfect size for you which i think is really really great there's there's a big chart which combines the body size and the sleeve size so you can see exactly how many stitches you need to cast on and um, how much yarn you need for each variation so yeah i'm super excited to start that so that was gonna, that's going to be my main focus uh, for the next few weeks um aside from that apart from that which will be my main project this this will probably go on hold i am really excited to get this done but i'm gonna probably just put this on hold for now um the other reason i haven't really got many works in progress is because summer sock, sock camp is starting tomorrow first of june and i have quite a few that i want to um cast on so that i spoke about this last week so i'll just kind of run through again the first one is this um yarn by comedy and uh, opal from the comedy range so these are going to be my dad for my dad for father's day and i'm going to try these two at a time on magic loop so i'm going to be cast casting on them and obviously father's day is three weeks yesterday so i want to make sure i get them done that'll be the first first set then i've obviously got my vicky brown um design yarn that I got from the Make 100 Skeins um, project. And um, I've also got a couple of other socks to cast on. I'm going to segue now into new yarn um, as it's basically new yarn for sock camp. It's pretty much what, what I'm working with right now. You may have seen on my Instagram, I did a, a cute little slow motion video um, of my big love crafts order that I had mentioned in the last podcast so that was obviously the Rico luxury super fine Aaron Aaron yarn uh, there was also for another pattern um, Lang Cashmere in colorway 23 which is like a really light gray almost off-white grey colourway. See, so yeah, I've got 11 balls of this to make another sweater with, which I will put in a picture that way. Put in a picture of what I'm going to make. So it's 100% cashmere. Um, See, so yeah, I've got 11 balls to make a sweater and this is basically an early birthday present to myself of a super luxurious sweater so yeah this is i will be making this but obviously this is now going to be pushed back even further my plan was to swatch this and the rico sweater at the same time and then decide which one i wanted to make first i've only swatched the rico one so far just because i wanted to see what the pattern the fabric was like after it was, had been swatched so yeah i might i will swatch this and then when I get to making, I will I'll pick one or the other. Um, so yeah, that um, and then also in that package, I got some West Yorkshire spinners four ply signature yarn. This first one is in the colorway Robin. And to go with it, I got cayenne pepper. So that will be a contrasting heel, toe and cuffs. And my plan for this is going to be a Christmas present. It's going to be um, there are actually the same person for the Granny Squares, Granny Stripe Kimono. This will be a Christmas present. They had a little boy in September. So I'm going to do mum and baby matching socks. And then I'm also going to do dad and baby little socks. So that will be... Oh. So this will be... Uh, yeah, mum and baby socks. 
and then I'm going to pick another one of their bird colourways to do the dad and baby matching socks. So that was what came in my Lovecrafts order. Sorry, Matt just came home again. He seems to make a habit of that. Coming home mid podcast. It's my fault, I should have started earlier. But So, uh, just a sneak peek there. The next yarn I got is another Vicky Brown design yarn. She released some new colours on Friday. And if you ordered before 4 pm, then it arrived on Saturday, which it did. So, this got away. So it's pinks, uh, pink and purpley with blue, and this yellow, greeny, greeny yellow running through it. It is 75% superwash merino, 20% nylon, and 5% stellina. It's a 100 gram, gram skein, 400 meters of sock yarn. So I'm super excited because I haven't actually knit any socks with Stellina in yet. Um, I've always thought that maybe it would feel a bit uncomfortable, but no, it still feels really soft. So I am, this colourway, sorry, is called Duke. Where is she? So I am going to use this for a particular sock pattern, which I'll come to talk talk about in a second but yeah so I, I went onto Vicky's website and the box popped up saying 10% off if you sign up so I did that and whilst I was there I also purchased myself a the 2021 yarn advent calendar advent box which is 20 gram mini skeins and that will ship in December, November. Sorry, that's going to ship in November. So yeah, I've got also got ten percent off that, which was great. Um, I'd been kind of looking at all lots of different yarn advents to purchase, and then I saw Vicky was doing one, and I've already got her yarn, and I already love it. So I thought I'm gonna I'm gonna stick with what I know. So I'm super excited for that. So yeah, this is Duke, which I cannot wait. I do have to hand wind these both. I need to probably just get a ball winder, but uh, that's gonna be my job this afternoon is winding these, so I'm ready to cast on. Um, and so, yes, that is my new yarn for May. So pattern purchases, there's been quite a few pattern purchases, which is why and most of them are socks, which is why this episode is called The One With All The Socks. So the first set of socks are by Twin Set and Pearl. It's another collection. This is the Bridgerton collection. So there are six socks. There is the Daphne sock, the Duke sock, uh, Whistledown, Lady Portia, Lady Danbury, and Lady Violet. So Twinset and Pearl had a promotion running, buy one, get one, um, throughout May, which is an anniversary sale. So of course I got all six patterns because they are beautiful. So obviously one of them is called the Duke. And then I saw that Vicky had a new colorway called the Duke or called Duke. So it made sense to me to have the sock and yarn, same name. So I'm going to cast on the Duke sock with the Duke yarn. And I that got me thinking, and I would quite like to stick with that theme for the other six designs and use regal, regal yarn in some kind of format um, to cast on the other five socks. So if you have any recommendations of um, yarns that have a, a name, a regal name, like, or Bridgerton themed yarns, then let me know because I'm going to try and keep that going. 
so that is why that's why that yarn was picked to go with those socks i also um the day that uh, also in may twinset and pearl released released a shawl pattern called the diamond quarter and the release um, had an offer for 50% off again so I purchased that and I think this is just a really beautiful shawl that I will probably cast on and gift as a Christmas present for one of the grandparents so that was they were my twin set and pearl purchases I then had uh, so Becky from Bex Creates who has the hashtag sock that I'm testing for released the first pattern in the Schitt's Creek collection which is the Sunrise Bebe socks which were inspired by Moira and they are a beautiful lace sock with the detail on the back which is very Moira-esque if you if you watch Schitt's Creek and you're familiar with her jewellery then you'll get that reference but yes yeah, so I've, I've purchased that sock which was released yesterday um, again with a release discount so if this video is up in time then head over there and, and get yourself a copy of the pattern so I'm going to be watching out for those and collecting those patterns as they come out I've got a thing for collections I think most people who are in the yarn world love a collection which is because we collect yarn that's what we do but the yeah the pattern collections sock patterns I, I love them so I am probably going to be a sucker for any kind of collection I see um, see out there so yeah I'll be I'll be purchasing those as they come out I know Becky's working hard to design each of the um, patterns at the moment so watch this space for those um, also in May Becky released a free pattern the after party sock which is here on Ravelry, which again just looks like a super fun pattern to knit. So I think I'm probably going to cast on that as one of my um, camp sock, camp, uh, what's it called? Sock camp, summer sock, summer sock camp um, socks. And I may even use this yarn by Vicky Brown Designs for that pattern. We'll see. I haven't really planned it too much yet um yes so the last pattern i've purchased is by rust knitwear designs and it's the lines summer top which i think just looks lovely nice and nice vest top with a simple pattern i'm not sure if the it's the the pattern is simple but it's kind of very much my style it's a uses a cotton yarn I believe I haven't actually looked too much into it I believe it's a cotton yarn it might be a blend um but yeah so I've, I've purchased that and I would like to cast that on and actually be able to wear that this summer we'll see I'm not actually sure how long the summertime tea is going to take me so and and how what other patterns crop up because I definitely have a bit of um pattern fever at the moment and just am favouriting and buying a lot of new patterns. Not sure when I'm gonna be able to make them, but there we go. So yeah, they are my pattern purchases for the last two weeks. Um so yeah, keep an eye on my Instagram for when I cast those on and hopefully most of them, a lot of them will become works in progress over the next few months definitely the socks over sum summer sock camp so yeah keep an eye out for those so that is all of the yarn related content um other things so now it's come to the end of may i thought i'd share the books that i have read so at the beginning of this year i got a new bullet journal natural and olive bullet journal and I started tracking the books that I was reading. I set myself a challenge on Goodreads to read 30 books this year, which I'm actually steaming through. I don't know if it's just because of the pandemic and not being able to go out much, but I definitely have read and reading 
I'm either reading faster than I thought or I have just never really tracked how much I read so I don't, I'm not really sure but so I started um, a spread to track my books I'm not actually sure how many is here um, but yeah I thought this would be for the year and it's taken me halfway through May so the books that I've read I don't know if you can see so I put the book the author whether it was an audiobook or an actual book on my kindle and then a little rating so I the first book I finished was called Pretending by Holly Bourne um which I've given four stars um it's about a woman in her 20s I guess who is basically not having very much luck dating so she pretends to be someone who she thinks would be the perfect date um so yeah that's a it's a really it's a different spin on a dating romancy book but it's really really nice read really interesting a really quick read um so I enjoyed that hence why I got four stars I think I read that one pretty quickly and then I decided to not actually buy any more books in May but read all the books I have in my library on my kindle I haven't got too many um because I'm quite good at only buying books that I'm going to read like straight away but this but yeah so I, I do have a few that are sitting there especially if I'm getting the free book at the start of the month from kindle um or prime i'm not sure i think it's I'm not sure but yeah so they they've started to build up so i started reading a few of those books that were kind of in my library um the first one was you had me at hello by mari mcfarlane which i gave three stars um it was okay it was quite predictable it was a bit of a slow starter but it was quite a nice easy read um, so then I had to start a new book spread, which I've kind of only done the basics at the moment. Um, so I've actually got, oh, so I've actually done five books in May. So then I had The Secrets of Us by Lucinda Berry. Um, and I can't really remember what that was about. Oh, that was about two sisters. Um, it was quite a short read. I think it was a free one again that I'd got. Um, it was okay. I gave it I gave it two stars. It was I kind of just wanted it to end really. There wasn't I mean it wasn't that great. But it was a quick read, so I finished it. Uh, and then audiobooks. I first I finished Kate and Clara's Curious Cornish Craft Shop. I think the craft shop shop bit just um lured me into that one. It was a bit out there, but it was a nice, easy read again, a bit fluffy. Um, it was easy to listen to whilst I was doing housework and washing up and things like that. Um, yeah, so that got two stars again as well, because again, it was quite predictable. It was a bit, it was okay. And then the latest one is I See You by Claire McIntosh. Um, it's the first book from Claire McIntosh that I've read. I know she's got quite a few out. Um, I gave that three stars. Um, it was kind of predictable I mean I didn't guess the ending um, but again that was it was a it kept me interested it kept me going which is why it's got three stars but I didn't didn't love it so yeah I mean it's a, a little bit of a disappointing month for books but um, I haven't been too worried I've been focused on other things and watching other things and I, I started watching The Crown again I watched the first two seasons when they came out and then once they changed all of the cast I had to give myself a break I couldn't get used to it so it's been a couple of years and I've restarted that and I'm loving it I'm really enjoying Olivia Colman as the Queen I think she's doing a great job um, yeah and I really like it I love the dramatic theme theme song at the start um, and the other thing I've watched, which also inspired the uh, name of this episode, was the Friends Reunion, which was, I didn't, I kind of had heard it was coming, but I never thought it was really going to be anything that special because, 
I just wasn't really expecting much from it. But yeah, I watched that on Friday night and choked up in a few places. It was very emotional. Um, it was really nice to see them. I thought they did it really well. I, I won't spoil it if you haven't watched it yet. But um, yeah, it was really nice. I think they did it in a really good way. And I thoroughly recommend it. Um, which made me think, I wonder if there's any Friends socks pattern collections out there. I'm sure there is, probably. So I might go on a, on a hunt for them. It also made me want to re-watch Friends again. I mean, I, I mean, who hasn't watched it ten times over? But um, I haven't actually sat and watched it from start to end since I originally watched it when I was at university. So I think I'm going to do that again. Um, and last thing that I've been watching is Grey's Anatomy. I think they need to call it a quits now. I mean, there's been some nice surprises in this series, some old faces cropping back up. Again, I won't ruin it if anyone's behind, um, but that's the only thing that I've enjoyed really. But once I start something, I can't quit halfway through really. So I will see it for the end, I will carry on watching it, but I'm not, I'm not really paying that much attention. But there we go. So yeah, if you've got any book recommendations, I obviously need some more interesting books to read, um, then please comment and give me your suggestions. I'd love to, I love getting a recommendation from someone. Yeah, so let me know your book recommendations. That's all for today. Um, like I said, I'm probably going to keep filming to every two weeks. I um, I'd had last week off and but I wasn't very well so I didn't actually get as much done as I wanted to but I'm back to work tomorrow so that will also be interesting to see how much knitting I get done back to work um, but the sun's out so I'm hoping I'll be able to spend my lunch outside knitting um, but yeah so every two weeks if you, like I said, if you hit the subscribe button and make sure the bell is selected, you'll be notified when there is a new video. If you like the video, then give me a thumbs up and leave a comment below and let me know how you found it. Were there any bits you particularly enjoyed that I should do more of? Let me know. Also, let me know your book recommendations. Um, you can find me on Instagram at yarn.stories and you can follow my 30 minutes of knitting progress. I'm going to start trying to do that before work, I think. I normally log on at half seven, so we'll see how that goes. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you again in two weeks time. It goes surprisingly quickly how goes surprisingly quick how oh my gosh it is surprisingly quick so oh my gosh surprisingly quick